receiver. Second down, 29 yards to go. 10-14 remaining in the score of this first quarter as McCoy rolls to throw. He has time. He pops it, and he hits it to Tyler Brown out at the 35-yard line, or the 33-yard line, and Brown is whipped hard by Michael Septo the moment he catches the ball. Third down and 15. Nice catch there by Tyler Brown. Lancaster back out over the ball. Wide receivers to the near side. McCoy rolls right. He'll put it up, and it is over. Collins puts it. Kenwood waiting for the snap. He gets it, and he gets the kick away. A high, very high punt. Wobbly punt, and it is dropped and then picked up on first down. Bounce by Meadows, and he's smothered immediately at the 30-yard line. Very dangerous trying to receive punch. John Frazier was better to in the line of scrimmage with Thomas Dunn, the only running back, and they have twin sets to either side. A slot back and a wide receiver either way. Going in motion. The cornerback, or the wide receiver for Meadowdale. The pass is completed, and immediately the Gales rip the receiver at the 33-yard line. Todd Burwell would have none of that. He tore into Terrence Lowe, is wide to the near side. Meadows to the far side, slots on either slide, and now in motion comes uh, Henderson. There's the snap, and back to throw is Boykin, the quarterback. He almost nearly intercepted at the 40-yard line, and dropped by Steve Harris, who did that deed last week. Quarter from Fulton Field in Lancaster. You're listening to Lancaster High School football on Z103, 103.5 Lancaster. Under center is Eric Boykin. And then to secondary, Doug Lowe comes to the near side. Lauren Meadows to the far side. The two other wide receivers are in the slot. Only one running back, Thomas Dunn, behind Eric Boykin. Boykin back to throw. He slips and he falls and then he's ready hammered back at the 22-yard line. On a slippery field, Eric Boykin turned the set. His legs slip. Boston is back to receive for Lancaster. Boykin will be doing the punting, or Brian Henderson. They have Henderson back to do the punting. Snappy he bobbles, he tries to get away. After blocking a punt, Billy Dilly did the deed, and the Gales come up in their full house, robust backfield with Mike Rosser, the middleman, to give us to Colin Foot. He ripped off right tackle to the eight yard line, but about all he gets is Alvin Jordan is there to make the stop after a second down and eight yards to go or goal from the eight. Andy Smeltzer in the backfield along with Rosser and Foot. It is a fake to Foot, and McCoy is to throw, and he fires, and it is incomplete. In the corner of the end zone, Tyler Brown did a tremendous job of their run and shoot offense with only Rosser, the running back, and the trip receivers to the far side of the field. And McCoy rolls left, and he fires, and he overthrows Colin Foot at the five-yard line. And now Lancaster will bring on, because that's going to be tough to do. The Gale uh, offensive line lines up far left, and then they come back uh, to the line of scrimmage, and Murray is ready. Bosworth will kick it. The snap is a little bit uh, to the left, and the kick is blocked. And snap, he had to turn. Meadowdale. Meadowdale out over the ball. Thomas Dunn is the running back. Eric Boykin is the quarterback. Sends a man in motion, gets the snap. Boykin rolls right to throw. He fires, and it is dropped. He had a wide open receiver, and it was Thomas Martin who could not hold the ball. Knocked it away. Meadowdale back out over the ball. Wide outs to either side with slot backs both ways. And the hand is to Thomas Dunn. They tail back, and there is nothing there. Knocked down for a yard loss by Todd Plant. Good defense by both teams. This much defense and uh, when you have run and shoot offenses out there. But on a wet field, it might be that kind of a night. The Lions of Menendale back out over the ball. Wide out to either side. Slots both ways. And again, Boykin drops the pass. He fires. It is cut for the first down by Thomas Dunn at the 35, 40, 45 yard line and clear out to the 47 yard line before Steve Harris breaking in the first quarter of play. We are scoreless. Meadowdale now 
now starting to move with the ball. Eric Boykin again brings his team to the line with front back to both sides, gets the snap and drops the throw. Boykin goes for the home run down the near side lines and overthrows his intended receiver. He had Rodney Jackson on the floor and Meadows to the far side. Two slot backs move up uh, near the line of scrimmage. Boykin calling for the ball on second down and ten. Gets a snap, drops three steps, fires. The ball is tipped by the Gales, but top of the receiver, Doug Lowe, at the 45 of Lancaster. Short of the first down by three yards, Jason Rush goes to the far side, and Rodney Jackson to the near side. Slot backs drop in the slot. Boykin calling for the ball, third down, four yards to go at the Lancaster 46-yard line. He fires, it is caught, first down for Meadowdale. Lauren Meadows makes a beautiful catch at the 38, knowing that he's going to get it. Meadowdale again with the two wide outs uh, to either side and the two slot backs to either side. Only one running back, that's Thomas Dunn. Sends one of the slot backs in motion. And Boykin gives to Dunn. Dunn tries to sweep right. There's nothing there, and he's thrown for a loss on the play by Todd Burwell. Back at the 40-yard line, Burwell drills him for a loss of a couple. Second down, 14 yards to go, Meadowdale. They look like the Gales looked in their last home game. They have on the white jerseys and blue trousers. The back to throw is Boykin again. Rips one hard over the middle, and it is caught at the 30 to the 25 to the 22. A first down for Meadowdale, Steve Poston on a rope in this wet condition. He has been very, very impressive early on. After the evening in this very sloppy condition, very impressive. Boykin brings them back to the line. First down, 15 yards to go. Again, twin receivers to either side and one running back. Boykin to throw, drops seven steps. Big rush, barely gets it away. It is attempted field goal, some big defensive stands, and Nick McCoy brings his offense, split back to the line of scrimmage, gives to Rother, he fights into the hole, gets very little as Alvin Jordan, the inside linebacker on the left quarter. We are scoreless as Wheeler and Brown trot to the near side, Rother and Colin Foot. Nick McCoy, second down 10, calling for the snap. It's a draw play to Rother, Rother for five, Rother for 10, Rother for 15 yards. Makes the stop, the safety. Brown comes right. Slip back behind Nick McCoy. Two minutes remaining in the first quarter of play. We are scoreless. McCoy gives to Rosser. Rosser tiptoes his way into the hole. Slides to the outside, but is knocked down after a yard gain. Second down and six yards to go from the 29-yard line. McCoy calling for the snap with one running back. He gets it, and he gives it. And it is Rosser out over the 30 to the 35, and very near another first down. Kawami Boy attack, but McCoy has had some problems in the air, missing on his last four tries. Two wideouts to the near side, split running backs. McCoy rolls right. He wants to throw. He does throw. It is caught by Colin Foote at the 38. He's knocked down at the 39 for a pickup of four. John Draper offering coverage for the Wheeler and Brown in tandem to the wide side of the field. In fact, it is trips to the left side as uh, they send a third receiver that way. And then gives to Rosser, and he powders his way for the first down. Fights the tackle at the 49. run by Mike Rosser. He's about 5'11 uh, and about 195. I, I would just about bet you're right. He really looks much bigger than uh, his listed weight. Back to throw is McCoy. His ball is tipped into the air and incomplete and Wheeler and Brown again go ball at the 45 in Lion territory. The Gales in possession. It is third down and six. Lancaster in a scoreless first half and McCoy is back to throw it. He turns and he fires over the head of Colin Foote, the intended receiver, joined by Lauren Meadows. Dunn and Meadows back to receive Henwood. Punt. Henwood will get the snap at his own 42-yard line. A little bit low, but he gets it. It's a fake punt. He throws the pass. It is deflected and incomplete. And Meadowdale will take over a brilliant defensive play by Brian Hardline. First and 10. Meadowdale out over the ball. One running back. Wide outs everywhere. No running backs. They send him in motion. Dunn motion to the right. 
Back to throw is Boykin. He fires to Dunn. Dunn catches at the 43, moves to the 45, hit at the 45, and knocked down at the 49-yard line by Todd Burwell. Meadowdale back out over the ball. Calvin Holt is into the lineup as a wide receiver. Running back Thomas Dunn goes in motion. That puts four receivers as they flood the left side of the field. And a quick shot is completed, beautifully caught at the 43-yard line. Both teams have threatened. Both teams have come up with huge defensive plays to save the day. Boykin brings his team back again. A double slot either side. First down, 10. Little counterplay with uh, Calvin Holt carrying, and he gets maybe a yard. And Todd Plant is there to bring that. Second down and nine yards to go. 10-20 remaining in the first half of play. Back under center is Boykin. Double wide out to either side. One running back and two left their defensive front to kind of confuse Boykin that time. Two slot backs, two wide receivers, one running back. Boykin calling for the snap, back to throw. Drop three steps. He goes deep over the middle. It is intercepted or dropped. It was looked like it might have been caught at about the 18, but it was dropped. And a penalty flag. The Gale and the Lions are scoreless. Boykin now floods the right side of the field with four receivers as he sends even the running back in that direction in motion. And then Boykin throws to that side and completes the pass to Brian Henderson at the 20-yard line, and he drops the ball. They call it an incompleted pass. It was done to, uh, uh, Thomas for Eric Boykin. Seven of 12 in the passing department with a very sloppy, wet football. Boykin again floods the right side with receivers. Three already there, and he sends Dunn in motion to the uh, right side. Boykin to throw it again. Same play, and this one is dropped by Thomas Martin. And he whistled that ball to Martin just a tiny bit behind him. Wendell's Jewelers, South Broad at Chestnut, and Lancaster's Heritage District. Super Z 103. Play resumes in a scoreless first half. And Meadowdale with the ball. Third down, 10 at the Lancaster 30-yard line. Meadowdale's quarterback, Boykin, to throw again. He fires and he hits and it's uh, done with the ball at the 20, the 15, the 10-yard line. And he's wrestled down by four gales, led by Burwell and Dilly and Poston came in to help on the Meadowdale back out over the football. First down and 10, just outside the 10-yard line. The Lions could get a first down without a touchdown. Boykin sends a uh, uh, Byron Henderson in motion, gets the snap and pitches to Dunn. Dunn sweeping left, cuts it into the seven-yard line, and that's about as far as he can go as the blue jerseys swarm all over him, led by Jason Wolf, inside linebacker, who was first six, let's call it, from just outside the six-yard line. Boykin sends his team to the line. Trip receivers. In fact, quadruple receivers now to the near side of the field as they send the running back in motion to the right. Boykin back to throw. Big rush. He is hit. He is knocked down at the 15. Opens the football, but it is caught in midair by one of his linemen, Derek Shepard, and they're calling the ball back at the 15-yard line. Shepard is at two. That's the call. An incomplete pass. It is now third down and goal from the six-yard line for the Lions. Third down and six, rather. They could make the first down without the touchdown. Again, the running back comes in motion to the right side of the field, and Boykin looks right to throw the ball. Tucks it away. He runs. Five-yard line, four-yard line, and down he goes at the four. In the arms of Rob Rosser, that 5A2 touchdown, and they are going to go for it. They are not going to attempt the field goal. Thomas Dunn, the only running back, and Eric Boykin sends him in motion to the left side. Boykin gets the snap, drops three steps, pump fake, fires, and it is caught. Touchdown! It was Thomas Martin, I believe, who came up with the catch in the end zone. Number 10, Thomas Martin scores, and Meadowdale goes to the shoe tops. Robert Ambos now will attempt the extra point. Ambos out of the hold is Doug Lowe, and the hold man in this situation on this wet field is critical. The ball rolls back to him. They can't get it down. It is blocked, and the penalty flag flies. Uh, Ambos uh, was knocked down, but no extra point, and now Ambos will kick it away for the Lions. Mike Wickham and Steve Poston are deep to receive for Lancaster, and it goes to the far side of the field, and it's gathered in by Wickham, and he comes across to the near side to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and is knocked down at the 32-yard line. Brian Howard, so far tonight, the Gales have completed only three of ten passes in this one. 
Nick McCoy, a 44% passer coming in, sets his team with two running backs and gives to Rosser. Rosser steps through the hole. A flag is down as Rosser goes up the sideline to the 45 and is finally hammered out of bounds at midfield by John Draper. And a penalty flag is down in the their passing game has been uh, a bit suspect so far tonight. Colin Foote drops into the slot to the far side. Mike Rosser, the only running back. First down 10. Foote on a reverse play. Comes around for the handoff. Gets it inside the 45. And is knocked down at the 43, maybe the 42-yard line by Michael Septo. I had nothing to do with this. So I want you to know that. I had nothing to do with it. It was fine until you got there, Keith. <laughs> Nick McCoy brings them up now on second down and three yards to go. Takes a three-step drop. Wants to throw. And he's going deep for Henwood. Overthrows the world. Mike Wheeler to the short side of the field. Tyler Brown to the wide side. Henwood, the tight end. And Rosser and Colin put the two running backs. Third down and three. It is Rosser, the bread and butter ball carrier, and he is denied as he gets only one to the 42. Henwood will be doing the punting for Lancaster. We have six minutes remaining in the first half of play. The Gales trail six to nothing. There's a snap, and Henwood's kick is end over end toward the Coffin corner, and he rolls it out of bounds. Eric Boyton's going to have to be very protective of it this deep in his own territory. Brings his team out with four wide receivers. Two Eric Boyton working behind those two huge guards. And again, first down and about 14 yards to go now due to these half the distance penalties. And Boykin brings them up again. Boykin with one running back. And he drops into the end zone to throw the ball. And he fires and he hits. And it is out near the 15-yard line, just shy. Tonight. It's tough to get any pass rush on him because he's got such a quick release. He just fires it. Six nothing. Meadowdale leads. They have the ball first down ten at their own 16 yard line. And on a draw play, it is done. Coming to the near sidelines, up to the 20, the 25, and out of bounds at about the 25 yard line. Billy Dilly makes the stop for Lancaster. We have 5:25 remaining in the first half of play. Meadows and Lowe are the wide receivers to either side. Lamar Hall is in at one of the slot back spots. Brian Henderson the other. Back to throw is the quarterback Boyk, and he throws, completes it to his tailback, and Todd Flint tackles Thomas Dunn at the 30th target practice against this Gale defense tonight. He has been tremendously successful. He has completed 10 passes in 17 throws. He sends his tailback in motion on first down 10 at the 35-yard line. Ryan Territory, and there's a sack for the quarterback as Boykin is ripped. Back at the 30-yard line. Heard uh, passing. It's going to get a good pass for us, but I think we'll come out on top. And he did that time. Second down, 14 yards to go as Boykin sets his team in the double slot. Back to throw as Boykin. He turns. He fires. It is incomplete again. Intended for Thomas Dunn the tailback. Doug Lowe goes to the left side. Lauren Meadows comes right. The two slot backs flood the left side, and now the running back joins them. Four wide receivers left, and Boykin looks left and throws and completes to Henderson at the 43 to the 45. He may have fumbled the football, but he was knocked down at the 47-yard line, and I believe they're going to say he had the ball when he went down. On a wet field with a wet football, he has been sensational. Boykin brings his team up by a little confusion. He had his wide receivers to the short side of the field. Now they come to the wide side and set up in trips. Here comes the running back to make four wide receivers. Boykin rolls right, throws to his running back. Thomas Dunn catches the ball at the 45 and is smothered at the line of scrimmage and a penalty flag is down. Four line and we're able to come out of that. A very quick football team with an excellent quarterback. Boykin brings them back again. He has a Double wide receivers either side, back to throw, Boykin fires, and this one is off the mark and incomplete. One of the few times he has not put the ball to the Lancaster 43 for the first down. 334 remaining in the half. Boykin sets his offense. Double wide out to either side, one running back. Back to throw is Boykin. He looks, and it's done again at the 35. A flag down is done, cracks out over the 40, and is finally smothered at the 44-yard line by Matt. Here come the Lions. 318 remaining, first half of play. Eric Boykin under center for the snap. Keeps his running back in place and gives to him on a draw, and here comes Dunn. Dunn for five. 
drive done for 10. Still on his feet out over the 40-yard line and hammers his way to the 43. A big gain, and Dodd Plant puts him down. Done has operation back at the home of my mouth. At the 43-yard line, 2.55 remaining in the half, and here come the Lions, and Dunn in motion left, four wide receivers left. It's third down and a bunch of yards, and there's another sack as Dunn went, or rather as Boykin went back to throw. Rosser just spun his legs out from under him as he cocked his arm to throw the line up to do the punting for the Lions. The Gales do not have a deep receiver with 2.44 remaining in the first half. They don't have anybody deep, and that punt is maybe the reason why. It's a terrible punt off the side of the foot that's uh, painting the Gales trailing by six. Wheeler and Brown, both wide to the far side. And back to throw is McCoy. Rolls right, he pops it for Colin Foot. He catches it at the 40 and down he by six. Gales back to the line of scrimmage. Wheeler and Brown again in tandem to the near side, the wide side of the field. It's a double slot near side. McCoy to throw again. He's being rushed. He gets it away. It is caught by Colin Ford at the 41-yard line. A and a first down for the Gales. John Draper makes the tackle. The ball was thrown behind foot. Draper catching one of the score. They have a minute 45 to get it. Wheeler and Brown in tandem to the far side. Tight end Tim Henwood splits off to the near side. Two running backs behind McCoy. For Henwood, he's got it with the 35 to the 30. Henwood out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Michael Stepto makes the tackle. Another Gale first. The wide receiver twins, Wheeler and Brown, follow each other to the wide side. Henwood comes to the short side again. And McCoy drops again three steps. And he lobs for Henwood, and he's yard line of the Lions and the Gales are threatening here with a minute 23 remaining in the half. Faust to the near side, a wide receiver far side, one running back for Faust in the corner of the end zone. No, he cannot hold it. Defense by Michael Stepto who just had been and uh, kind of numbed his legs a little bit. Second down, 10 yards to go at the 14 yard line of the Lions, a minute 17 remaining. McCoy gets the snap and gives on a counter play to Faust. Six 
Second down, Lancaster. 17 yards to go. Two wide receivers to the far side. Split back to McCoy. Rolls right. Rushes on. He cuts through it and wants to run with it. Puts the ball away at the 40. Goes to the 43 and gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. The 44-yard line. And the Gales will face third down and 10. Joe Henderson. Gales back out over the ball. A slot wide receiver to the near side. And McCoy to throw. Ball is batted away by one of those big linemen. It was Brian got the snap at his own third end. At the 49-yard line, Lions back off this time. The snap is perfect. The rush is big. The kick is big. End over end. Hits at the 10 and rolls into the end zone. Big punt by 10 one but it will come out to the... Boykin is 2 of 4 in this half and 12 of 23 in the first half. Gets the snap at his own 20, back to throw. Pump fakes his head and sacked at the 15 yard line. The Gale defense is all over him. It was Mike O'Rourke who read the defense led the defensive charge for Lancaster. A loss of five, second down, and fifth offense normally, but not tonight. Not on this slippery turf at Fulton Field. Second down, 15. Boykin, one running back, four wide receivers, back to throw. Gets time. He goes deep, and it is caught by Thomas Martin at the 41-yard line, and he's out of bounds at about the 43 or 4. Officially, it's the 43-yard line, and Boykin sets them again. Same formation. Four wide receivers and one running back. Boykin looks to the right side, fires, and it is dropped by Brian Henderson at the 46-yard line. He had a right. The Lions back out over the football. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the 43-yard line in Lion territory. Boykin throws, and it is caught at the 48-yard line. The receiver slipped down. Warren Meadows, a gain of five, to be on that defense to uh, get active. As Boykin brings them up with Thomas Dunn, the 5'8 senior running back behind him, and three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. Now Dunn goes in motion to flood the field with four receivers, and there's a quick pass to Martin. He can't hold it at the 40-yard line. Boykin had no time at all. He had to throw the ball early because of the C. Lions will attempt to punt it. Rodney Jackson must be shell-shocked from uh, giving it a try. He's tried it three times, 20, 11, and 14 yards. He gets a perfect snap. He catches the snap. He kicks the ball very high and rather short, and it rolls to the 30-yard at 15 out of it. Gale's coming to the line, and McCoy has the ball. McCoy gives to his tailback, Rosser. Rosser for 10. Rosser for 15 yards. Rosser for 17. arms around the ball just as the tackler got there. 47 of the Gales lost it for their only turnover of the game. 4-10 remaining third quarter. McCoy gives to Rosser. Rosser to the 50. Rosser to the 45-yard line. He gets eight yards. His average on the night and Jason Harvey brings him down back to the line of scrimmage. Wheeler and Brown are wide to either side. Foot and Rosser are in behind McCoy. Two running backs. Second down a couple. Here comes Rosser, and he nearly lost the football as they spun him down at the 43-yard line, very near a first half. Lancaster and Dayton Meadowdale nodded at six. Mike Rosser and Colin Foot setting his team on third down and one inch to go at the 43 of the Lions. A quarterback sneak. McCoy breaks it to the outside.
of 35 yards. Field goal attempt, maybe 36 yards. In fact, 36 as the ball will be placed at the 26-yard line. The Gale line moves into position. Scott Burry will be holding. Tim Henwood will be snapping. And it will be a 41-yard field goal attempt by Bill Bosworth on this very muddy surface. From 41 yards, there's the placement. The kick is up, and it is short. Just barely under the crossbar. Very intently. That's how close it was. Goes back to the lion, and Eric Boykin starts all over again. He has no running back, five wideouts. Wheels the pass to the near side to Thomas Dunn. Dunn to the 20 as he catches the ball and takes it out to about the 25 for a gain of five. Billy Dilly makes the stop for like six yards. A pop on first down that really helps him out. 17 of 32, second down and five for the Lions. Back out over the ball, a minute and a half remaining in the quarter. Boykin drops seven steps, flushed out of the pocket, rolls left the pass off the run that cannot be held by the intended receiver out at the 34-yard line. Steve Harris Boykin is un under such pressure. He cannot afford to leave his team deep in his own territory. One running back. Boykin under center. Third down, five yards to go. Henderson goes in motion. Boykin drops the throw. Being rushed. Being rushed. Clear back to the 10. Gets it away in a desperation throw that is incomplete. And the Lions will be forced into a down and yards the front. Meadowdale punter Jackson back on the field. There's the snap. It's there. And this time he just line drives one. Bunts it. And it's picked up at the 50 yard line by Postman to the 45. To the 44, maybe. He's knocked down at that point. And the Gales will take it over again. Lions. The Gales go to work. Aaron Henwood, the center who has replaced Chris Hunt with the injury, is out over the ball. And McCoy slides in behind him. And the boy, rather, is using for the Gales that drawn him offside a couple of times. That's the 12th penalty of the game against Meadowdale. Lancaster back out over the ball, first down five, 40-yard line of Meadowdale. Man in motion, and McCoy to throw. He wheels it to the sidelines, and an almost great catch, but it gets away from tight end Tim Henwood, and out of bounds incomplete. At the 40, second down, five yards to go. Seconds remaining, third quarter, we're even at six. McCoy under center, gives to Rosser, Rosser to the 35-yard line, he has a first down for the Gales as he takes it inside the 35 to the 33, and Joe Henderson, third quarter as Lancaster comes to the 33-yard line of the Lions, first down and 10. Nick McCoy under center, gets the snap and gives to Rosser, Rosser off left tackle to the 30, Rosser fights his way to the 27-yard line, driving and digging before out. Yeah, following our game here at Fulton Field tonight, you're listening to Lancaster High School football. I'm Dick Shore with Key Smithfield. McCoy has Lancaster second down and four. Gets the ball and gives to Rother, but not much there. He gets to about the 25 territory. Go for the first down rather than the field goal if you don't get it here. Nick McCoy under center. Two running backs. McCoy gives to Foot, and Foot gets the first down as he fights inside the 23-yard line, or it appears from here that he has first down yardage. Martin and Thomas Martin scoring for Meadowdale. First down 10, 23-yard line, one running back. McCoy gives to Rosser. Rosser for five, still on his feet, dragging defenders inside the 15 to the 12-yard line, a gain of 11 and a first down for the Gales. John Draper makes the attack at the Lion 12-yard line. Nick McCoy with Rosser, his only running back. Wide receivers either side. Gives to Rosser. Rosser to the 10. Rosser to the 9. And he's using the hot hand now as he takes it to the 9-yard line. Joe had a first down without scoring. Nick McCoy with that robust full house backfield gives to foot off left tackle, hits to the six yard line and struggles forward in his own back. Brian at the six yard line. He'll move it to the two for the first down. Third down and four really as Lancaster's McCoy fumbles the step from center, dives on it at the seven yard line. And we've seen here this evening as we come down to the nine minute mark in the fourth quarter, it will be Scott Berry holding. Tim Henwood snapping, and Bosworth kicking, and he gets a clean snap and a placement, and the kick is good! The Gales 9, the Lions 6, and look back after this timeout. 
field goal, puts the Gales in the lead for the first time tonight, and now he kicks it away. A high driving in over end kick, and it's Thomas Dunn at the 10, the 15, the 20. Straight up the field to the 30. Finds a slot to the 35, to the sidelines to the 40, and is rolled out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A great return by Thomas Dunn, and an Innodale Lions to the line of scrimmage. Thomas Dunn is the running back. They have flooded the field with wide receivers to the left side or the wide side. Here comes Dunn to join them to make it four wide outs to the near side. Boykin to throw. Rips one. It is caught by Morton. He splits the defense at the 40 and nearly gets away. And he's finally brought down at the 32-yard line. Thomas Martin. Nearly. Gain of 28 on the play. And back out over the ball come the Lions. First down 10 at the Lancaster 32-yard line. Back to throw is Boykin. Big rush. He's been chased. He fumbles the ball, catches it in midair, goes back inside his own 50-yard line, and throws and completes the pass at the Lancaster 30. Believe it or not, Steve Harris makes an immediate tackle. Only a short game. Really almost lost it on the ground. He juggled it around, finally got control of it again. Boykin brings him back to the line. Second down, six yards to go. Inside the Lancaster 30, Boykin rifles one. It is caught at the 25. I believe so. No uh, shoestring or no uh, trap. He's on a roll again as he brings his team back to the line of scrimmage on third down three at the Lancaster 25. Boykin will throw it again. Big rush, big rush. He is back at the 36 yard line. And I mean, there was a bunch of blue in there. Bill Westham and Michael Rourke, the leaders of the pack, a big defensive play. Equal housing lender. Super D1 coming up. Ball at the 36. Ryan Z, 13. It is fourth down. They must move to the 23 for the first down and back to throw is Boykin. Everybody's out. Boykin tucks it and runs with it. He slips one tackle and drops that next to the top down about the 32-yard line. Big defensive play by John Carter. The senior defensive end and the Gale hold and take over on down. And I would imagine they're going to see an awful lot of rough imagine as McCoy sets him and gives to Rosser but he ran into him Rosser didn't even get a get the ball back here so this is a big series for Lancaster second down 15 yards to go McCoy gives and it is Rosser to the 32 yard line Peter and Brown to the wide side of the field and still has uh, and now he slots Colin Foote leaving Rosser the only running back McCoy rolls right to throw. He looks back left, nothing there. Flushed out of the pocket, rolls to the sideline. Rolls on a player that is intercepted at the 41-yard line and out of bounds at the... Nobody out there is quitting. Eric Boykin brings his team in. Four wide receivers, one running back. That's Thomas Dunn. Boykin drops three steps, whistles the pass. It is caught by Doug Lowe. Lowe slips one tackle at the 50, gets first down yardage, and inside the 45, five remaining in the game. Nine to six, Lancaster lead. You're listening to Z103 as Boykin calls for the snap from center, gets it, and drops the throw. Big rush. Wheels a pass that is incomplete. He was hit. Every time now in the position they're in, they're across midfield at the Lancaster 43. Second down, 10 yards to go. They have a rifle arm quarterback by the name of Eric Boykin, who is calling for the snap and drops the throw again. He whistles it deep. He's looking for low. He's got it. Catches the ball at the five-yard line. Point, and it's Robert Ambos who will attempt it. Ambos will attempt the extra point here with a 12-9 lead for the Lions. There's the ball placed. It is kicked terribly and uh, no good. The kicking game for the Lions is really their The kickoff. Ambos gets after it and kicks it very high and very short. And it is taken and... Uh, Immediately, the receiver goes down at the 25-yard line. Three Gales were fighting over it. Poston got to his first classic high school football confrontation here at Fulton Field in Lincoln. Nick McCoy, two running backs. And he gives to Rosser. And Rosser bangs away to the 31-yard line, getting five, six, maybe even seven yards on the carry. Alvin Jordan, Wheeler, and Brown wide out. 
yards either way. Two running backs, second down, and three to go. McCoy rolls right to throw. Stop, tucks it away, may run. Caught from behind and dropped at the 29-yard line for a loss of Henry Mead. Big, big third down play. Gales may have to consider this four-down territory. McCoy back to throw. McCoy being rushed, flushed out of the pocket, sends up a player, intercepted at the 45 to the 40 to the 35-yard line, and out. Lions now will try to tuck this one away. They lead by three, 251 remaining. Gales are going to have to play some furious defense here. Still with the four wideouts, but they give the ball to the running back, Thomas Dunn. The Gales knew he was coming. The Gales are two and a half minutes away from their first loss of the year unless they can get the ball back and drive with it. Boykin sets it. One running back, four wide receivers. If they reverse play to Lamar Hall, he dives into the hole for the Lions of Dayton Meadowdale. They try to run the clock out on Lancaster, leading the Gales by three. Here's a mess up in the backfield. The team made sure of that. Carter with a pick this one. The punter will get the snap. at Jackson at his own 48-yard line. The snap is a little low, but he gathers it in and gets off what probably is his best punt of the night. In fact, there's no question about it. It goes out of bounds at the five-yard line. Six yards this year, and it was a TD. So his only pass has been for a touchdown, a 36-yarder. Murray drops into the end zone to throw. Fires it to the far side, completes it to Chris Fowles, who is back on the field for his first catch of the night. He got only three yards on it in the lineup. Gale spread the offense across the field on second down and seven, and Murray into the end zone to throw again. Rolls right, nothing there, tucks it away, he'll go. Out to the 10-yard line, and knocked over there. Of that, a minute 18 on the clock, Lancaster back over the ball. Scott Murray, the sophomore quarterback, gets the snap, drops three steps, throws, completes the pass to Henwood. He's out of bounds. Injury on the last series of plays when uh, he was intercepted. Murray under center with one running back. Back to throw it. Rolls left. Pump fake. Then puts it up. It is caught, I believe, at the 32-yard line. The catch by the yard line to the 32. First down and 10. Murray has been effective hitting his passes. And he throws the foul, and he hits again at the 37-yard line. The coverage by 58 seconds remaining in the game. Second down and five. Fouts and Brown are wide to the near side. Murray rolls right. Big rush. Gets it away, but it is incomplete. Intended. Gales back to the line of scrimmage. One running back. Wide out either way. Third down along five. Murray sets the throw. Rolls right. Flushed out of the pocket. Tucks it away. He is sacked back at the 30 yard. Fourth down and 12. This may be it. Murray back to throw. Needs a big 12 yards. Rolls left. Being chased. He'll run for it. Cut from behind and shoved towards the sideline. Dives for the first down marker. Comes up shy. The ball will go over to the Lions of Brown. 